Hello viewers, welcome back to our Digital Seekers channel. Today we are going to talk about virtualization. How it has started, how it has progressed over a period of time and where we stand right now with respect to virtualization. So these are the topics that we are going to cover today. Before we jump into the actual topic, let me just tell you that I am going to correlate the dream inside dream inside dream concept of the movie Inception with virtualization. And also being a technology company, how we expedite the developer onboarding process using docker and virtualization and also improving their productivity so please stay tuned to understand virtualization we have to first understand the basic concepts of virtualization computing resources abstraction and workload these are the three basic concepts of virtualization to understand these basic concepts let us start with an analogy let us say you are feeling hungry you want to eat food you went to your restaurant you pick the menu you selected some dishes you selected a juice or a mocktail and you call the waitress. You give your order. Now the waitress will split your order into two parts. The beverages part she'll give to the beverages counter and the dishes part she'll give it in the kitchen. So now your juice and dishes got prepared. Your waitress will actually consolidate all of them and put them into one single meal and deliver it to you at your table. You will have your food, you pay the bill, end of the story. Right? So in this whole process, we, we can see all the three concepts of virtualization at play. Let us say the vegetables, fruits, knives, peelers, electricity, these are all going to form your basic resources. Now the chef knows how to prepare dishes out of these basic resources and your beverages counter guy knows how to use these basic resources and prepare a juice. So they are forming one level of abstraction now the waitress knows that there are two separate counters and she has to split your order to get it served that means she is adding one more level of abstraction at the same time your different parts of the order are actually forming different workloads so let us just recap what has happened different workloads require same or similar raw resources at the grassroots level or in other words same or similar raw resources going through different processes of abstraction end up being different outcomes. In our example, we have vegetables, fruits, knives, peelers and electricity forming a dish when it went through the abstraction of a chef. Whereas the same raw resources went through the abstraction of a beverages counter guy ended up being a juice. On the similar lines, we can as well treat multiple dishes prepared out of the same or similar raw resources can as well be treated as different workloads. So in our previous example, you went into a restaurant because you wanted to have food. If you wanted to watch a movie, you would have rather went into a movie theater. And if you wanted to do a workout, you would have gone into a gym. Now, how does this all translate into a computer computing? In a computer computing world, your raw resources are RAM, hard disk, CPU, and network. You will open a word program if you, if you wanted to write a word document, a PowerPoint if you wanted to make a presentation, and a video player if you wanted to watch a movie. All these applications in turn interact with the operating system to perform their respective tasks. Operating system in turn translates the application requirements into the computing resource requirements and helps fulfill the results. Now your application presents back the results to you. Whether you're typing in a word program or preparing a presentation or watching a movie, all these applications are actually adding one level of abstraction to you as a user. Let's say you're watching a movie and you press the rewind button in the video player. Now the video player will start reversing the process of reading the frames and ask the previous frames from the operating system. Operating system in turn actually reads the frames from the disc and presents it back to the player. Now the player starts presenting the frames to you as a user. So in this process, your video player doesn't need to know how to read or write from the disk. Reading and writing into the disks, communicating over the network, performing complex arithmetic and logical operations, these are abstracted by the operating system. Operating system provides these as APIs. So on the applications like your word program, presentation, video player, they actually use these basic APIs and perform different functionalities and expose those functionalities to you as a user. So now you as a user can perform different workloads on top of the applications which are in turn using operating system and operating system in turn uses 
the basic computing resources like RAM, hard disk, CPU, and network. So virtualization is the concept of serving different workloads through different processes of abstraction using the same common hardware, or virtualizing the hardware fabric to serve different workloads can be treated as virtualization. Our computers and smartphones are serving different workloads using various applications running on the same common hardware. All these applications might think they, that they have the entire hardware at their disposal, but in reality, they are actually time sharing the basic hardware like your RAM, CPU, hard disk, and network. Now that we have understood the concept of virtualization, let us try to understand where it has started and how it has progressed. So in the mid 1960s and 1970s, the hardware cost used to be very high. So at that time, there used to be very huge gigantic machines like ENIAC and mainframes. Research groups having their individual computational needs used to timeshare these machines. They used to submit their uh, computational requirements using jobs and these jobs used to be scheduled on the mainframe or central server. There used to be a job scheduler running on the central server which used to pick the jobs based upon assigned priorities, execute them and return the result. So this concept of time sharing the hardware can be treated as the first version of virtualization. So as the time progressed and the cost of hardware started coming down because of the invention of uh, transistors, printer circuit boards and then your uh, central processing units. So finally, the need for computing also started growing. Uh, now the users wanted to have uh, dynamic and different workloads. To address this, we needed to run multiple operating systems on the same hardware. So data centers with racks have spun up and the need for scaling the applications horizontally during peak loads have increased. So during Thanksgiving weekend, that is when uh, most of the people come online to purchase, actually uh, creates a peak load on the underlying e-commerce platform. To address these peak loads, we have to dynamically increase uh, the hardware of the application servers, which are actually running these applications. The hardware could be RAM, CPU, we might need to increase it dynamically. To understand this advanced concept of virtualization, let us try to extend our existing restaurant analogy. So far, the restaurant was serving only the customers who are coming into the restaurant and then having food there. Now, let us say uh, the restaurant has started serving customers on two different channels, Swiggy and Zomato, online ordering systems. Right Now the restaurant has three different customer segments. So one segment who are actually walking into the restaurant and having food and second segment which is coming through Zomato and third segment which is coming through Swiggy. Now the management of this restaurant has uh, become a bit smart. So they said uh, now, we have, now that we are addressing three different customer groups, let us break our kitchen into three different teams. In restaurant, Swiggy and Zomato. So they divided the teams and also their raw resources so that uh, none of these customers are unhappy. But unfortunately, this setup didn't work for the restaurant. Reason is, the peak loads of these three channels used to be different. When there are more people pouring into the restaurant, the Zomato and Swiggy order line used to be small. So the people, the team which is responsible for Zomato and Swiggy used to sit idle in anticipation of getting more work. Whereas the team which is actually serving the people who are in the restaurant are actually very busy and they are uh, outrunning their human resources at the same time their raw resources. The in-restaurant team cannot take the raw material or resources from the other two channels, Swiggy and Zomato, because they are not assigned to them. So this left many of their customers unhappy. So let us park this uh, analogy here and then uh, come into the virtualization concept. The virtual machines are created on top of the hardware racks and bare metal. They have two types of hypervisors, uh, type 1 and type 2, to achieve this feat. So type 1 hypervisor runs on top of the bare metal or the hardware rack directly, whereas uh, type 2 uh, hypervisor runs on top of an operating system. So as an example of type 1 hypervisor, we can take VMware. So VMware runs on top of uh, the bare metal or uh, hard disk, RAM, CPUs and network and uh, on a rack. And you can create virtual machines by configuring dedicated RAM, hard disk, CPU for each of those VMs and you can spin them up. 
During peak loads, you have to bring down the virtual machine, up, update their configuration and restart the machine and bring it up and then uh, scale it horizontally. So this process of uh, scaling up has actually left a bit of uh, delay in the process of horizontal scaling, warranted a downtime in the application. And we lived with this kind of a virtualization for a very long time until the containerization was actually brought into place by Docker. So let us go back to the type 2 uh, hypervisor. So type 2 hypervisor is something which is actually running on top of an operating system. It will run adjacent to your Microsoft Word, PowerPoint presentation and your uh, video player applications. It is yet another application running on top of your operating system. So this hypervisor type 2, as an example, we can take uh, Oracle Virtual Box. So this runs on the same hardware as your operating system is running. This has the access to the entire hardware as long as other applications are not demanding for it. So again, here you can create multiple operating systems, multiple virtual machines running on top of this hypervisor. So this has the exact same limitations of type 1 hypervisor. Like to horizontally scale any virtual machine, you have to bring it down, change the configuration, restart it. And on top of this, it also had one more uh, layer of abstraction, like it is running on top of an oper operating system. So it is adding more delay. So this led us into containerization through the advent of Docker. Docker is a lightweight demo running on top of operating system. And it deals with the hardware directly by using uh, kernel namespaces and groups. So you don't need to assign RAM, hard disk, CPU during the start of a Docker container. Virtually, all the hardware available to the host machine is also available to each of these containers. Each Docker container is a lightweight container for which you can assign minimum, maximum of all the hardware resources like RAM, CPU, network bandwidth, hard disk. You can assign minimum and maximum and throttle it. Or uh, if you don't want to have any restriction, you can just uh, let it have the complete hardware. Being lightweight containers, it is easy to run a Docker container from a Docker image. So horizontal scalability has seen its true potential after the advent of Docker. Docker has revolutionized the way we look at hardware virtualization and make it, made it so simple and brought it to the hands of the developers. There are many other advantages for Docker than just virtualization. So discussing all those advantages of Docker uh, would be out of scope for this session. I have other videos wherein I have talked in detail about Docker, so please go through them. So Docker doesn't really run on bare metal, so it needs an operating system to run. That means it is actually adding one more level of abstraction over uh, hypervisor type 1 virtualization. So what you generally do is you actually have a big rack on which you will run big uh, virtual machines using type 1 hypervisor and on top of those virtual machines you will actually run Docker containers. Planning the workloads properly and mixing different peak time workloads into groups, we can actually reduce the cost of number of machines that we require for running those peak loads. And we can also address the horizontal scalability issues by spinning up the Docker containers as the need arises. There are even other advanced concepts in uh, Docker container management like Docker Swam, wherein you will have a pool of virtual machines forming a one big Swam, Docker Swam, on which you can run applications with multiple containers. So you can load balance multiple containers and then you can actually run multiple applications on different peak loads easily using Docker Swam. Now after learning this uh, Docker container system, we can actually go back and visit, revisit our uh, restaurant example wherein they have three different teams in restaurant Zomato and Swiggy and instead of creating them as individual teams so we can follow the docker process and then make sure that they leverage the resources, underlying resources, chefs and the raw material as the need arises. So in this way they can actually better serve all the customers of various channels. What do you think? In the beginning of this session I told we can correlate dream inside dream inside dream concept of the movie inception with virtualization. Let me tell you how. So virtualization inside virtualization inside virtualization is uh, on the similar lines as dream inside dream inside dream. In our production workloads, we are already having uh, on a big rack, we are creating a virtual machine, which is creating one level of virtualization. On top of that, we are creating Docker containers. 
So Docker containers are adding one more level of abstraction, one more level of virtualization. And if you have Docker Swam in between, one more level of virtualization. And the beauty of Docker is you can run one container inside another Docker container. That means you can add one more level of virtualization. That means you can really get virtualization inside virtualization inside virtualization inside virtualization and so on. So are there any practical use cases wherein this uh, inception concept of Docker is going to be useful? Uh, I just know of one use case. Uh, in a CI CD uh, pipeline, uh, you might want to run test cases of a specific uh, application which you have built as a container. Maybe you want to run that container inside uh, your uh, testing uh, infrastructure. So that can be a container inside a container. But uh, I don't know any other specific use cases wherein you will use uh, containers in Docker containers inside Docker containers. So if you have any such examples, please comment down below. And we are very much interested to know about such possibilities. I also told that uh, being a technology company, uh, I'm going to tell you how we are improving the productivity and onboarding process of the developers. We use microservices for our uh, development of products. So we have multiple products to develop and then we ended up having multiple tech stacks. Now the developers, when they are onboard, they have to actually install the software related to that particular technology that they are going to work on and then start working on the technology. And if they have to change the technology and work on some other, some other technology, they have to start installing all the software and development tools required for that technology and again start working. So all these uh, applications, all these softwares that we install actually have some background processes which will be uh, pre-installed along with the software which will be eating up into our RAM and CPU which will uh, pollute our global operating system space and uh, leave the operating system at a state wherein uh, the performance will be hindered. How we are addressing this using virtualization? We are actually creating a virtual machine snapshots for each tech stack with all the required softwares installed including Docker, uh, deployment, all the softwares that are related for the technology stack development we have a virtual machine snapshot. So any developer who is willing to work in that particular technology will take the VM snapshot, create a virtual machine out of it, start developing. He doesn't need to worry about anything else. And if he has changed the game and then he has to work on another tech stack, he'll either remove that virtual machine already he has created or he'll just stop it and create another VM for the new technology that he's working and starts working. So he starts his development. So in this process, uh, all the software that is related for the technology stack development is part of the virtual machine. It is inside that container. The moment I stop it, it is not polluting the operating system, the host operating system. The host operating system is always in its virgin state so that the performance of the machine is always on the higher side. So this is boosting the productivity of our developers. And onboarding was easier, why? Because you just need to create a virtual machine out of an existing snapshot and start developing. So this is how virtualization and Docker containers are actually helping us in improving our onboarding process and also the productivity of our developers. Please let us know if you have any other use cases wherein uh, the developer productivity can be boosted using virtualization and we'll be very interested to know. If you found this session useful and the tips that we have given are useful, Please comment down below, we'll, we'll be happy to know. Keep seeking, until the next time, bye bye.